Yo, Hisao, you won't believe this, man. What's up? An AI made a podcast about us. An AI? Oh. You think it went easy on us? I mean, there's only one way to find out, right? With over seven years in the game of iron, Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, strength training, bodybuilding and nutrition, I've learned lifting is more than just numbers. It's a philosophy. I'm David Dexter, the gym genius, sharing my journey through visual storytelling to help you unlock your full potential in the gym. I really wonder if the AI said things we didn't think of. The AI is so full of surprises. Yeah, it's unpredictable. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's dive in. So, um, have you ever gone down like a fitness video rabbit hole? Like, you know, you see those inspiring transformations. Mm. And you're like, man, I'm going to go eat a salad and run a marathon right now. Oh, yeah, totally. Those transformations can feel impossible sometimes, especially uh -huh. with like a million different approaches out there. It's like, where do you even start? Right. Exactly. And that's kind of what got me hooked on this whole series that Dexter, you know, the gym genius guy is doing with his musician. His how we see tons of generic fitness advice online, but seeing a real plan tailored to one person. I thought that was fascinating. Definitely. I mean, anyone can talk about fitness in theory, but seeing someone like Dexter put it into practice with a real person, that's where it gets interesting. And since like his is probably starting from a similar point as a lot of us, there's a lot we can learn from this. For sure. So we've got Dexter, like always this ball of energy, <laughs> promising his like a total transformation in six months. And true to his style, he's putting a lot of emphasis on these big compound movements. Oh, yeah. He calls them the heavy hitters. Oh, yeah. You know, squats, deadlifts, all that fun stuff. Yeah, the stuff that really makes you work for it. But yeah. there's a reason those are his go-tos. It's not just about looking ripped. Yeah, it's uh -huh. got to be more than just how it looks. Right? right. When you're doing compound movements, you're working multiple muscle groups at once. And that triggers a way bigger hormonal response in your body. We're talking like testosterone, growth hormone, everything you need to build strength and size efficiently. Okay, so it's like a shortcut, but in a good way. Exactly. You get more bang for your buck with each workout. Makes sense. And then the way Dexter builds on that foundation is through this thing he calls progressive overload. Which honestly might sound a little intimidating at first. <laughs> yeah, like, am I going to be lifting a car over my head by week three? Uh-huh. No, no, no. It's way simpler than it sounds. Progressive overload just means you're gradually increasing the challenge over time. So like with Hassau, if he's squatting a certain weight, as he gets stronger, they'll up the weight, maybe add more reps, or even have him slow down the movement. First and foremost, they feel like real people. Holy shit, man. I'm, I'm shocked. It's like I'm listening to someone from, I don't know what country, but America or UK, I don't know. But they're so in tune to everything that you've said in the video. I mean, how is this possible? <laughs> so just by the way they talk, you, you can already visualize two people, a man and a woman. Yeah. Sitting at a table together, yeah, just sharing thoughts on our video, yeah, our first video with the Gym Genius Blueprint, in which we showcased the six-month plan for Hisao. We're not even halfway in, and they're already tearing apart our ideas, like the heavy compound movements. They addressed it. They addressed why they work. They addressed why they're important as fundamentals. And the progressive overload. Did you hear that joke with the car? No cars involved. We promise. <laughs> <laughs> he literally said, will I lift a car over my head in week three? They're even incorporating human humor. Doesn't sound robotic at all. It sounds very organic, which is amazing. So it's like his muscles are under tension for longer. Exactly. You got to keep those muscles guessing, challenge them to adapt. Okay, that makes sense. But I'm guessing doing that safely is pretty important. Like you don't want to like Overdo it. A hundred percent. Especially with heavier yeah. compound movements, you got to nail that form. You want to challenge your muscles, not end up injured, right? Right, right. So I guess that's where Dexter's expertise comes in. Yeah. And honestly, for anyone listening, if you're ever unsure about your form, don't hesitate to reach out to a, a qualified trainer or even just, you know, post a video online for feedback. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Couldn't agree more. Now, besides lifting heavy things, Dexter's a big fan of getting those steps in. Oh, which... oh. so they're getting into steps. Yeah. <laughs> so before we go forward, I just want to say that was a little nice touch from the AI, unexpected, regarding form. They said that 
if you ever need advice and you don't have a coach, you can just film yourself and there are plenty of people who will be willing to help you on forums, Instagram. And this is amazing because we didn't talk about this in the original video, which is brilliant advice. So, wow, this is mind blowing. The AI is mind blowing. This technology is only one week, two week old, I think. It's Notebook LM from mm -hmm. Google. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is crazy, bro. So the AI is kind of like offering uh, their <sighs> own insights yeah. uh, on what they analyzed. On, yeah. Uh, or what Dexter, uh, you know, put together. It's scary, it's scary, it's scary. Yeah, yeah. So, I really wonder what they say about steps. Let's see. You know, I'm all for a good walk. Who isn't? But he's talking 10,000 steps a day. Plus adding in some bursts of high-intensity oh, interval yeah. training, or HIIT. Is that, like, even doable for most people? Well, that's a great question. It, it's definitely a combo that packs a punch. Like walking is amazing for your heart, helps you burn extra calories throughout the day. And then you throw in HII, I think, short bursts of intense exercise like sprints and boom, your metabolism goes through the roof. But 10,000 yeah, steps on top of like my regular day, that seems uh, ambitious to say the least. And that's where the idea of individualization is so important. Mm. What works for Hisao on tour might not work for someone with a desk job, right? Totally. So 10,000 steps is a fantastic goal for sure, but don't... Wait. Well, Did they just say that what works for Hisao on tour? On tour, yeah. I mean, Did like, they really say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they think... So that, now you're a rock star. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they, they think that I'm touring, right? <laughs> And Dexter built this plan for someone that is touring and is very busy, right? So yeah, this is this is crazy, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they they just you know uh, took everything and oh, he saw is a rock star. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they took our information from the first video where we said that you're an artist, an aspiring artist. Oh yeah. And you want to fuel your creative capacity by improving your body, mm -hmm. and they literally transformed that into saying that you're a musician on tour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is fucking creative <laughs> yeah, from yeah, the yeah, AI, yeah. coming from the AI, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe they see the future. <laughs> Ooh, who knows? <laughs> Let's go, baby. Beat yourself up if you can't hit that every day. It's more about finding what's sustainable for you, for your life and your schedule. So true. Okay, speaking of fueling up for all this activity, Dexter seems to have a pretty level-headed approach to nutrition, which mm. I gotta say, I appreciate that. No crazy crash diets here. He's all yeah. about whole foods, making sure his sow is getting enough protein to build those muscles and enough carbs for energy. Makes total sense to me. Though I did notice Dexter mentioned tailoring the meal plan to his sow's needs. Mm -hmm. What kind of factors play into that, you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. A ton of stuff. I mean, everyone's metabolism is different. Some people naturally burn more than others. And then there are their food preferences, any allergies, their culture, all of that. It's like, you know, creating a personalized puzzle, finding what fits his mm. specific needs and lifestyle. Okay, so it's not one size fits all. Not even close. Okay, so we've got the training, the cardio, the food. But one thing that surprised me was how much Dexter emphasizes rest and recovery. So, yeah, uh, before going into rest and recovery, honestly, I have no words. I really like that. It's like a personalized puzzle, you know? That is a very nice way of saying it. It also gets the fine details. Yeah, they got into the main stuff, the compound, the progressive overload, but the philosophical underlying systems behind our approach, they seem to really get it. When I hear them talk, it's like hearing people actually learning from what you said. And th mm. th this is their understanding of what uh, you made. They use the words in such a way that they explain what they understood from what you did there. You put things in that video in such a way that everybody can, you know, take that information in different ways. But the AI comes and just expands. Expands, exactly. It's like expands on it's that. adding unique angles yeah. to to our own philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and this yeah. is great because it's not only parroting what we said. Yeah. Ourselves are learning from our own material yeah. through this tool, yeah. you know, and it's free. So yeah. you can try it yourself. Uh, what's the name of the Notebook tool? Notebook LM by Google. Uh huh, okay. Let's go forward into the rest and recovery. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they get our cheat code. Right. <laughs> He's practically calling sleep like a superpower seven to eight hours a night minimum. And you know yeah. what? He's absolutely right to emphasize that 
Sleep is when your muscles repair themselves, when your body releases growth hormone, when your energy gets replenished. It's not optional. Okay, preach. I feel like that's the part so many people skip over. It's like, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead, right? Yeah, right. But think of it this way. You wouldn't expect your phone to work if you never charged it, right? Sleep is your recharge. I even saw Dexter mention this Wim Hof breathing method. I wonder if that's something Hisao is using to wind down. It's supposed to be amazing for stress and sleep. See, that's the cool part about following along with someone else's plan. You get these little bonus tips you might never mm. have considered otherwise. And speaking of things we could all use a little more of, Dexter keeps dropping this, this listen to your body wisdom. Okay. So they're listen to getting your body. deeper. They're listen. getting deeper. <laughs> Let's listen to our body for a moment. <laughs> what, what, what do we hear? <laughs> what do you hear? I just hear someone <laughs> yelling, go to the gym. <laughs> mm. So just to answer their question, are you still using the Wim Hof breathing session? From time to time. I had seven months when I, when I did it daily. Oh. The Wim Hof method, it's something that also, you know, mm. Dexter recommends. Now, from time to time, I'm just going to that uh, Wim Hof method because it refreshes the brain, refreshes the mind. It's a, an intense meditation for me. That's how I feel it. How about you? Yeah, it's one of my anchors, daily anchors. If I don't do it, I feel like my mind is going astray, <laughs> you know? I like doing it after my workout because adrenaline is high. It kind of puts me into a zen state of mind you know mm -hmm. it's also good for your time because only 10 minutes it's a bang for your buck there's also a good alternative to it the non-sleep deep rest mm -hmm. it's a resource from andrew huberman but i prefer the wim hof breathing method so whatever floats your boat right uh -huh. it seems like we're getting deeper in the weeds let's see but what does that even mean in real life like my quads aren't sending me text messages. Seriously, it's like my body's definitely trying to tell me something, but I'm missing the message. So is it all about like gut feelings or does Dexter have a more like strategic approach here? It's kind of both. On the one hand, Dexter's big on tracking, like really meticulous tracking. So think logging every workout. How much weight? How many reps? How he sows feeling afterward? Like having a fitness diet. <laughs> okay, so it's about like spotting patterns. Exactly. If a certain exercise is consistently leaving his sow sore or wiped out, they can adjust. So it's about working with your body, not just powering through no matter what. A hundred percent. And on the communication side, Dexter's all about making sure his sow knows to speak up. If the weight's too heavy, if something feels off, they adjust. Like that open communication can prevent so many problems down the line. Because let's be real. We've all pushed through pain and regretted it later. Oh, tell me about mm. it. So yeah, tracking, communication, mm. say. those are key. Yeah, so there's a downside to that part of listening to your body because your body can sometimes send you mixed signals, tells you that you don't feel all right. Maybe it's better to skip your workout. Like he saw sometimes tells me, I don't really have uh, the energy to, to do the sprints. Can you please uh, <laughs> pass this on for me today? <laughs> And but the sprints are sometimes a pain in the ass. Uh, the nail in the coffin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like, bam. So you need to be careful there when listening to your body. You need to build a lot of body awareness. But this comes with time. And with tracking, of course. Tracking builds awareness. Tracking is like training wheels. You use it until you don't need it anymore. As long as you know your body and you have awareness around its patterns, you don't really need to track. You need to track with a higher meaning in mind. Otherwise, you're just tracking for the sake of it. Awareness is the main goal. You'll reach a point in which you have awareness for your main patterns for a while, because the body changes, you change with time, and from time to time, you need to resume tracking again for a while to to shine awareness on the new things that came into your life, no? You need to recalibrate awareness to every new step. So besides that, how can people get better at tuning into their bodies? Asking for a friend. Well, first off, try to be more present during your workouts. Like instead of just going through the motions, actually pay attention to how your body feels. Are you energized? Are you dragging? Anything feel weird or painful? How's your sleep? Those little things can tell you a lot. 
So basically, our bodies are always sending signals. We just need to learn how to read them. Exactly. And don't even get me started on rest and recovery. Dexter's making sure Hisao gets those seven, eight hours, but it's more than that. Creating a relaxing bedtime routine, dimming the lights, putting your phone away, all of that yeah. helps. The AI makes it sound like you come at me at every night and you're like, Hisao, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like a ghost. Yeah. But another thing I've noticed, I really like the storytelling they infuse into the podcast, right? You see, they, they bounce the energy from one another mm -hmm. and it has a, a smooth flow. And they even talked about the nighttime routine. I don't think we've mentioned that in the original video with the dimming of the lights, putting away your phone. So mm -hmm. that's a really cool catch. That's mm -hmm. a really cool detail. That's kind of like an insight from them. From them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that when they talk, I don't know, what you think or but what i feel is that there are two people who are talking about what they observed right so that's a feeling that's a kind of like a human feeling coming from them i still can't get over that yeah, I, yeah. I, I i'm forgetting that it's ai you know i mean we are li listening we are living the future this is basically we're experimenting it we're yeah. experiencing it it seems like uh, we're getting new tools for the lab mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I always thought sleep was like this thing you squeeze in if you have time. Not exactly treating it as important as my workout. No, but yeah. it is. You can't skimp on sleep and expect your body to perform at its best. Okay, so we've covered training, food, sleep, and that whole listen to your body thing. But what about those visual changes everyone wants to see? Mm -hmm. Dexter's going for that body recomp with his sow. Okay. But how do you actually track that beyond just the number on the scale? Mm, that's a good question. The scale can be kind of a jerk sometimes. A hundred percent. Especially with body recomp, you're putting on muscle, which weighs more than fat, so the number on the scale might not tell the whole story. So what should someone look for if the scale isn't budging or like even goes up a bit? Asking for, well, everyone. First of all, don't freak out. Like Consistency is key here. If you're lifting, eating well, and moving your body, trust the process. And pay attention to how you feel. Are your clothes fitting differently? Do you have more energy? Those are all wins. You can also take progress pictures if you're into that. Those non-scale victories can be super motivating. Okay, so speaking of motivation. Yeah, so this is a very interesting discussion. They even talked about the fallacy of body recomp, numbers in the process of body recomp. Because numbers can be very, hmm, can be very mischievous hmm. when you're on a body recomp. You can't really trust the scale. You lose fat, but you gain muscle at the same time. So, as they said, the scale doesn't tell the whole story. And that's the truth, right? That's I mean, the truth. Yeah. yeah. By the way, the scale shows 91 kilos for Hisao. That's 14 kilos since we started. 14, yeah. 14 kilos. As they said, it's better to go with visual cues. Take progress picture, see how your clothes fit. It's, it's much better for your mind and for your, for your peace of mind, better said. Numbers can really get you into a rabbit hole if you are, aren't careful. Uh, there's another thing, a myth about scales. Dexter told me about it when um, I, you know, put myself on a scale and I have a lot of muscle. I don't have a lot of fat. But what the myth would be is that if I'm, let's say, 10 pounds more than my uh, height, that would mean that I would be obese. That's the... Body mass index you're talking about. Uh huh. That's a very general formula. It's a formula. You know? Uh -huh. But as every formula, it has its weak points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just an approximation. Approximation, yeah. If I do the body mass index equation, it puts me into an obese category. Yeah, category. but you would not be obese because you would have more muscle than fat. So... That's just a scale that maybe is used for people who are not working out, right? It's used for more average people. Average yeah. people in the sense that their lifestyle. The, yeah. Uh, uh, an average lifestyle mm -hmm. where you don't work that much, work out that much. You basically have more fat. And basically that scale of, uh, you know, uh, guiding yourself would be much more accurate than for people who are working out. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't need to be afraid. That's what I learned. Don't even check the body mass index. Yeah, don't, don't, you don't need Probably to check not. that because if you're working out... Just work out, it's good. See the visual changes yeah, in the you, mirror 
And after some time, you can also rely on the scale. But when things get more uniform, uh huh, uh huh, you know, yeah, yeah. So you're on the right path if you're just working out. And Dexter seems to have like this unshakable belief in his sow, oh. but everyone hits plateaus, right? So how's Dexter going to keep his sow going when things get tough? This is where Dexter's coaching skills really come into play. He seems to get that motivation isn't this like constant thing. So he's big on building a strong support system. It's about making his sow feel comfortable sharing, even when things are hard. Don't give a man a fish, teach a man how to fish. <laughs> so it's like having a coach in your corner, someone to keep you accountable, but also be your cheerleader. Exactly. And part of that That's is managing true. expectations. Dexter's very upfront that this is going to take effort and consistency. There will be days when Hassau would rather order a pizza than hit the gym. And that's okay. <laughs> so I'll find that balance. Right. right. Pushy. Is today one of such days? No. No? No, unfortunately. You're good. You're good. Being yourself, but also being kind to yourself. Absolutely. It's about progress, not perfection. Yeah. And I'm that, that phrase must echo in your mind. You need to get it into your skull. It's about progress, not perfection. The human mind tends to perfection for every one of us. So just a reminder. Curious, from what you've seen of Dexter's approach so far, what really resonates with you? I think for me, it's that focus on curiosity and self-compassion. It's not about being perfect. It's about learning as you go. And Dexter mm -hmm. embodies that so well. He's clearly passionate about fitness, but he's also like, approachable, not intimidating at all. Agreed. He makes it feel doable, but he also stresses the importance of expert guidance, of individualizing a plan. And that's what makes this whole deep dive so interesting. It's not just a hypothetical plan. We're seeing how it works in the real world. It's like a behind the scenes look at how these transformations actually happen. Because life doesn't always go according to the plan, right? Never. And that's what we're going to dive into next. All those potential curveballs his sow might encounter, and how Dexter, being the gym genius that he is, might help him navigate them. Okay. I so, a deep dive. That, that's what this is. There is more light in the darkness, in my darkness. Mm. This mm. is a deep dive, man, of what we've yeah. done in the first episode, right? Yeah. And also, AI is what? Databases, right, mm. of information. So yeah. they are collecting, let's just analyze a bit. They are collecting information from the web based on what they analyzed from your wording, right? Mm. The AI maybe selected this information that connected from other places with you. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Maybe it's complicated, but I'm just... But AI has come a long way, man. Since ChatGPT was first released in mm -hmm. 2022, November. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's much more attuned to the information you give it, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. it tends to get a very good grasp on the mm -hmm. problem at hand, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's also very witty with words. It's really nice to hear unique angles on our content. It's like version two of the yeah. first video. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm in. Because it's not about if you hit a roadblock, it's about how you handle it. Okay, so we've got... Dexter's master plan, right? All those heavy hitters, smart eating, prioritizing sleep like it's some kind of like secret weapon. But how's that going to work for his sow with him being a musician and all? Seems like a recipe for disaster, honestly. Well, yeah, that's the thing about fitness plans. They got to fit into your actual life, you know? It's one thing if you've got like a regular nine to five, you can meal prep, hit the gym at the same time every day, no problem. But touring... Late night gigs? That throws a wrench in the world. Seriously, I can't imagine finding a decent salad at a gas station at 2 a.m. Plus, like, performing itself is exhausting, right? Holy shit, man. So I, think, really I, I think they know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really a rock star in their eyes. Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy, brother. Yeah. Very funny, very funny. Totally. Yeah. You're using a ton of energy on stage, so Dexter's got to factor that is into the equation. Hmm. I got to factor that, yeah, in the calorie equation. Maybe I need to bump up the calories a little bit for the future. Whoa. So you won't have a big deficit with that, all that jumping on stage and... In the, case, better. In the case that uh, it would happen, uh, I'm sure that Dexter would, you know, help me in finding a way to sustain that life. Yeah. And I think that uh, the AI kind of like you know, now gives his, uh, yeah. their interpretation of how would you do that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a foreshadowing. Uh -huh. So the AI foreshadows, as you said, what's coming. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. brother, that's our next stop. <laughs> so, but honestly, I didn't think of the future from, from this point of view. Mm -hmm. Like, how will I manage his house plan when he's on stage? Touring. This is a whole nother game, mm -hmm. but I really like the challenge. The challenge. I'm all up for it. Instead of freaking out about hitting a certain number of steps on show days, maybe it's about incorporating movement into Hisao's pre show routine, mm -hmm. light stretching, a few bodyweight exercises to warm up those performance muscles. So, this is really a good idea. I'll take note of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many insights the AI manages to come up with? So it's all about like adapting the plan to the circumstances. Exactly. You got to work with your life, not against it, but like even with the best intentions, sometimes life throws you a curveball, you know. Tell me about it. So what happens when his sow gets sick on tour or his sleep schedule is totally messed up from traveling? Well, that's when that whole listen to your body thing becomes super important. Dexter can't be there with his sow 24-7, right? So it's about yeah. giving his sow the tools to make good decisions on his own, like if he's feeling run down, maybe skipping the crazy workout and opting for some restorative yoga is the way to go. So it's like... So you see, we're on the same page. Speaking of the idea of tools, teaching. It's like the AI is repeating what we said in one of our last shorts, but we didn't feed him that one. You did not give it any... You, you just said generate, right? A podcast... No, so I just gave it a video. Yeah. Use no prompt at all. In, yeah, that, that's what. I, so you used no prompts. No. You was just generate, no. and he analyzed, and this is what he came up with. That's exactly. I really wonder if, if unknowingly, they went into more of our stuff. I wouldn't be surprised to be honest, <laughs> because it looks like they they did it. You know. Yeah. Knowing when to push and when to pull back. That's something I always struggle with. I feel like if I don't follow the plan exactly, I've failed. I feel you. But I think Dexter's on to something with that whole like self-compassion thing. It's not about being perfect. It's about recognizing when you genuinely need a break and when you're just, you know, making excuses. And if a sow's struggling, he can always reach out to Dexter. They can tweak the plan together. That's what's so great about having a support system, yeah. right? Yeah. Someone to hold you accountable, but also be in your corner cheering you on. Totally. And I think that's what's so refreshing about Dexter. It's not just about like the physical transformation, it's about the mental and emotional side too. Like Exactly, exactly. So in the Gym Genius experience, the mental side is just as important as the physical domain of things, right? They go hand in hand because I feel like the belief systems are very underrated in today's fitness and coaching world. It's all about how many calories you eat, how many sets you're doing, this stuff is important too. I don't deny it. But without a strong support and belief system, you're doomed to fail in the long term. Because when shit hits the fan, you won't have any anchor to help you pass through the storm. Please think about it. Building resilience, being kinder to yourself, that's huge. It's about the journey not just the destination. 100%. This whole deep dive has really got me thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not about copying Dexter's plan to a T. Exactly. It's about taking those principles, listening to your body, being adaptable, mm -hmm. and applying them to your own life, your own goals. Oh, yeah. I love that. It's about using cool. fitness as a tool to, like, learn about yourself, not punish yourself. Exactly. So, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, remember to be kind to yourself, stay curious, and get your sleep. Until next time, keep exploring, keep pushing those limits, and let that inner gym genius shine through. Oh! Okay, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Nev we we never all, skip on all. sleep. What's your take? I mean, I, I, I'm shocked. I'm in love with technology. I always, you know, support the evolution of it because I feel the potential of it, of, like, designing our experience, designing the way that we live in the way that we sh would live better. And uh, this deep dive just got me thinking that uh, we can use the AI for the better. I mean, we can use AI to have better reflections. With this deep dive, I found out more things. Maybe those details were not missed by us, but they were just there 
and the AI just pointing them out more. Yeah, and maybe they they even kind of improved some things. You know, they made some things clearer. Who knows? So the idea here is don't underestimate AI's power. Mm-hmm. It will get even more powerful in future. It's better to learn the ropes of it and keep it by your side. Mm-hmm. Even in your fitness journey, mm-hmm. it can help you a lot. Mm-hmm. No? Yeah. So that was quite the experience, guys. Even with the AI turning you into a rock star, they brought up pretty unique angles on our journey we hadn't considered. They even mentioned your incredible progress. Yep. It's like 12 kilos in three months. Yeah. And I, mean, I didn't have to go on tour. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Yeah. So if you're curious how we pulled it off, make sure you check out the last video where we dive deep into the exact nutrition and mindset strategies that helped him lose 12 kilos in three months. I can assure you, you'll learn a lot that you can apply to your own journey as well. Don't miss it. Don't miss it, baby. That's what's up.